Hello. Um, uh, as you can see, we have uh, the big scope now. Last time I was uh, hiking up in the mountains up there. Now, the last couple of nights I've been uh, imaging uh, with this guy, plus the camera I'm filming with, with right now, on a reflection nebulae known as the Iris Nebula, or C4 Coldwell Catalog Nebula. This is a reflector, so it reflects by a titanic mirror at the bottom here and a secondary inside here and then the light comes up and focus around here and in this area right here now this isn't a cheap setup and uh, this is mostly because of the focal length it's a heavy scope so I need a heavy go-to mount astronomy don't have to be expensive but if you want to it can be really fun with a setup like this it is a really challenging setup so it'll learn you a lot now today it is clear so in a couple of hours we can start setting up uh, I've already got about 10 hours on this subject now the iris is very bright in the center it gets very faint with a lot of carbon dust clouds further out from the nebulae core itself and so I think we'll need about 20 hours to get a decent image and without you know very noisy background uh, so yeah, we'll uh, start setting up and uh, I'll love it if you were to join me on my astro astrophotography today. Now, I'm not a planetary imager, but I do have some Barlow on my scope. I don't think you can see it now because it's very dark. But we have a cable running from the camera to our computer. And here we are sampling frames per second using a quite good uh, software thing in EOS Backyard. I can write straight from the uh, live view of the DSLR. And with 30 frames per second, ISO 250 and one 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 hundredth of a second and uh, shooting with a 2x Barlow on a 8 inch f5 Newtonian let's see how that will look later I'll try it before not with that much luck <laughs> uh, but we'll see what we get out of this Now, if you are a professional astrophotographer, you know that you need a lot of exposure. But still, for a newbie astronomer like me, getting 19 hours integration on a target, that is a new record and it's a crazy amount of data. You know, if you're a data photographer, 
you might go with the one one hundredth of a second, while well, us uh, astrophotographers go with hours and hours. And this is, I think, four nights of imaging. So this is a lot of data. See, it's thirty six gigabytes temporarily used. So a lot of data, and the SIF itself takes around one gigabyte. Yes, yeah, so I thought I'd show you how you process an image uh, like this and uh, it's mostly about you know preserving the detail bringing up all the data because there's a lot of data and signal in here and of careful processing in uh, three or actually two programs serial and gimp and using a program or a neural network known as starnet plus plus to room to remove the stars and then i can process the different stacks a bit uh, easier and also did a 30 second stacks uh, just to uh, make sure that I have some detail in the core itself where it's a really bright blue sequence star and uh, it's mostly about you know bringing down the noise and still keeping the detail and you know after you get some uh, knowledge on how to do this it actually kind of goes natural Although you do use a lot of time on it, you know, compared to landscape photography, where I might use like max 10 minutes on the image. On this process, I used about one and a half hours. Uh, if you take uh, the stacking in that time, so it takes a lot of time, but I think the results are just totally awesome. Alright, so the image that I just showed you was my latest image, uh, the Iris Nebula, and it is my clearly best image yet. Uh, it is just, I think it's awesome. And, uh, you know, an astro image, you get a lot of, you know, feel of ownership to it because you use several days actually acquiring the data for the image. And uh, use a lot of time processing it compared to like a, a data photography image where you really don't use that much time processing the image and taking the image like the acquisition box. And uh, I would like to know if you would like kind of a behind the image or uh, looking into the data and uh, the image itself to learn about what's uh, actually what we're looking at kind of a astrophysics explained uh, video kind of a you know behind the iris or something like that uh, I have been waiting a bit to put out this video because it took a while to actually get uh, different parts going and uh, also took an image of Jupiter for my I think it was pretty crap so if you have any uh, you know thoughts on how I can probably improve on my planetary imaging uh, I've quite a newbie in planetary imaging so I'm imaging with the Canon DSLR and uh, an 8 inch FI Newtonian and then 2x uh, ED Barlow so I don't know if you have any thoughts of how to improve that uh, I know better detail is possible with it um, but maybe I just suck at processing who knows so until next time clear skies everyone